Yes, Ford Maddox Ford wrote poetry as well as novels and all his extensive journalism. I'm going to try and read a poem in quite a few sections called Bakshi, Poems for Heichka in France. And there's a superscription. Bakshi, derived from the universal oriental Bakshish, has no English equivalent. It is a British army word and signifies something unexpected, undeserved and gratifying. If the cook at dinner time slips three extra potatoes into your meat can, those are bakshi potatoes. If for something you are paid in guineas instead of pounds, the odd shillings are bakshi. If you are a little Arab boy alongside a liner and the passenger throws half a crown instead of a florin into the shark-infested water for you to dive after, the odd sixpence is bakshi, bakshish. Or if you have given up the practice of writing verse and suddenly find yourself writing it, those verses will be bakshi. Section 1. I think God must have been a stupid man to have sent a spirit, chivalrous and loyal, cruel and tender, arrogant and so meek, gallant and timorous, halting and as swift as a hawk descending, to have sent such a spirit, certain in all its attributes, into this age of our banal world. He had infinity, which must embrace infinities of worlds, and had eternity, and could have chosen any other age. He had omnipotence, and could have framed a fitting world and time. But, bruised and bruising, wounded, contumacious, an eagle pinioned, an eagle on the wing, a leopard maimed, a leopard in its spring, a swallow caged, a swallow in the spacious and amethystine palpitating blue, a night bird of the heath, shut off from the heath, a deathless being daubed with the mud of death, a moth all white, draggled with blood and dew, Heichka, you undaunted, loyal spirit of you, came to our world of cozening and pimping, our globe compact of virtues all half-virtue, of vices scarce half-vices, made of truth blurred in the edges, and of lies so limping they will not stir the pulse in the utterance. From a new world that's new and knows not youth, unto our France, that's France but knows not France, where charity and every virtue hurt you. O oh, coin of gold dropped into leaden palms, manna and frankincense and myrrh and balms and bitter herbs and spices of the south. Because God was a stupid man and threw into our outstretched palms, Heichka, you, Bakshi, Section 2, Compagnie Transatlantique. What a dead year! The sea swings, a dull amethyst, and the doves and sparrows droop grey, and the gulls in the mist on the dull wet rim of the sea. Slowly, slowly, heavily, heavily, Dully, so dully, the heavens lower. Slowly, slowly, heavily, dully, the sands of the hourglass descend. I have neither foe nor friend. I am neither erect nor stoop. I am neither enslaved nor wield power. Will this endless day never end, or this month, or this year? Slow, heavy, dull, drear, why should they end? The mists are riven, the sea swings free, there's blue in the heaven and horns on the sea. Eo, eo, the conches blow, the sparrows and doves all follow their loves, 
the white gulls troop in a lane on the sea there's a horn on the hill a furrow is driven though you are invisible still straight from the skyline to me and eo eo the conches blow eo eo haichka Bakshi, section 3, Fleuve Profond, Nuité à l'Américaine. Your brilliant friend brilliantly lectures me on the feminine characters of my female characters. Our striking host, having strikingly struck his striking head against the bottom panel of his bedroom door, has been conveyed to bed by several combined but unconcerted efforts. Hear how he sings. The other guests, dispersed among the apartments of the appartement, dazedly hearing the appraisement of Elaine concerning half-forgotten feminines, I sit beside her brilliance on the divan edge, my knees drawn up to my chin in the dim light. We seem to be alone. She tosses back her brilliant mane and white uplifted chin, long throat, makes incantation with her spidery white butterfly moving fingers. I just loathe Miss Warnock. There drift sounds of harpsichords, of saxophones and ukuleles, drums, mandolins, mandragoras, slapped faces, spirituals, lacing the Paris night. That's four o'clock, the Luxembourg clock drones out. But hear them sing. Beside her, I sit like a drummer, peddling rubber pants and comforters in the Atlas mountain valleys, beside their largest lion. Knees drawn up, almost to the chin, peeping, a shiver, sideways, at a lip-licking monster. I am all unused to talk about my books. If I could get my fingers on your rotten cully's throat! She can't mean me. By rights, I am the lion. I'm all for Sylvia! Then it's Teachum's throat in jeopardy. But hear them rolling along. I ain't saying nothing. A black light's shining. I ain't doing nothing across the shadows. It keeps on rolling. A ray of granite. I loathe your teachings. A cone of granite. What's that dark shining? But that's Heichka. I loathe that woman. No, not Heichka. How stupid of you. The wallop trollop. My best, most intimate friend. You too had drawn your knees up to your chin and motionless. In an unwinking scrutiny you sat, a cone of granite, a granite falcon, a granite guardian of granite pharaohs, the leather chair you'd chosen for your vigils, made with you a cone, Egyptian, chiselled, oriental, hard, without motion, polished, shining granite. Did you watch to save your dearest friend from me? or me from your dearest friend. I wish they'd sing another rhythm. You gaze before you. It must be seven. Are you all going? Yes, Ezra's going. Not one more hot dog. The howls for breakfast. I love you, Sylvia. She kept him jumping. She loathed his vitals. She gave him thumb screws, the callous meal sack. Yes, Marge is going. Bill, are you coming? I know why she's your dearest friend. Elaine, oh, come on. Heichka, bring her. Why, where's Heichka? She's with that writer. Oh, with that writer. Oh, with that writer. She'll keep him rolling along. Shenahai means pretty creature. Shenahai, for short, Heichka. She'll keep him rolling along. Bakshi, section four, 
shame of any. Silent in the background, she glowers now and then at me with a smouldering tigress's eye that does dream of cruelty. Leopard, ounce or ocelot, she by turns is cold or hot, she is sinuous and black, long of limb and lithe of back. The deep places of the mind she can probe, and thus can find every weakness, every blot, every weary, aching spot. She will scrutinize her prey, turn disdainfully away, sinuous and dark and cold. Then she'll spring, and then she'll hold. Then with what a dreadful heat she will mangle breasts and feet, and hands, and lacerate a heart, and then listlessly depart. Bakshi, section 5, L'Interprète au Caveau Rouge. They sing too fast for you? I will interpret. That aged, faded, leonine-faced Carl, in dim old tights and frayed striped gabardine, now quavers the famous sonnet. This is it. Sonnet de Renfart. When you are old and dim, the candles burn, seated beside your fire with distaffs gossiping, and reading out this verse, say, here's a thing, enfin ma célébré du temps que j'étais jeune. There shall be no old spinster shall not turn, though half asleep above the brands but sing, and hearing of my name cry, here's the thing. Hansa extols our dame from out his urn. My soul shall wander through the myrtle dust of fields Elysian. Thou as thou must shalt bend, all bent above the dying brands. Our lady sees the hour, the minute flies. Resort thee thither where thy true love lies, nor wait till hail torture thy tender hand. You did not know I was a poet. Few possess that knowledge. I've the trick at times. Give me the subject. I will find you rhymes. This Provençal, bright-cheeked, high-stomachered, with coal-black eyes, shall sing a thing. The tune might make you cry if you had any heart. Plaisir d'amour. Love's sweets are sweet for such a little day. Her bitterness shall last your whole long life. The world forsook, I followed Sylvia. Me now she leaves to be another's wife. Whilst still the waters of this stream shall glide Between its banks of meadow sweet and bracken, Tis thee I'll love. Thus, thus, once Sylvia cried, The waters flow, their verge she has forsaken. Love's truths are sweet for such a little day. Her bitter falsehoods last a whole long life. Now, here's your favourite she's going to sing. Knowing it said what gentlemen prefer, she's flaxen-locked, but once was brune piquante, and prix de conservatoire. Poor thing, she'll write her autograph on your programme if you smile at her. But she's a lovely voice. Auprès de ma blonde. She. Down in my father's garden, sweet blooms the lilac tree. Down in my father's garden, sweet blooms the lilac tree. And all the birds of heaven there nest in company. He. Where lieth my lemon, blonde and warm and blonde is she. Where lieth my lemon, fine it is to be. She. Down in my father's garden, sweet blooms the lilac tree, and all the birds of heaven there nest in company. The quail, the speckled partridge, the turtle fair to see. He, where lieth my lemon, blonde and warm and blonde is she, where lieth my lemon, fine it is to be. She, 
and all the birds of heaven there nest in company the quail the speckled partridge the turtle fair to see and eke my pretty stock dove sings night and day for me he where lieth my lenel blonde and warm and blonde is she where lieth my lenel fine it is to be she the quail the speckled partridge the turtle fair to see and eke my pretty stock that sings night and day for me she mourneth for such fair ones as not yet wedded be he where lieth my lemon etc etc she and eke my pretty stock that sings night and day for me she mourneth for such fair ones as not yet wedded be but i have my fair husband so mourns she not for me he where lieth my lemon etc etc she she mourneth for such fair ones as not yet wedded be but i have my fair husband so mourns she not for me he now tell me this our fair one where may thy true love be where lieth my lemon etc etc she but i have my fair husband she mourns she but i have my fair husband so mourns she not for me he now tell me this our fair one where may thy true love be she the false dutch have taken him he lies in battery he where lieth my lemon etc etc now tell me this our fair one where may thy true love be she the false dutch have taken him he lies in battery he what wouldst give my fair one thine own true love to see where lies my lemon etc etc she the false dutch have taken he lies in battery he what wouldst give my fair one thine own true love to see she oh i would give versailles and paris that great city he where lies my lemon etc etc he what wouldst give my fair one thine own true love to see she oh i would give versailles and paris that great city saint denis notre dame and the spires of my country where lies my lemon etc etc she oh i would give versailles and paris that great city saint denis notre dame all the spires of my country and eat my pretty stock love that sings always for me he where lies my lemon etc etc Bakshi, section six, Champetre. Yesterday I found a bee orchid, but when I gave it to you, you never raised your eyebrows. That a bee orchid? It's like neither bee nor orchid, was all you said, and dropped it amongst the tea table debris, and went on gazing out over the lake. As once you dropped my letters into a Sixth Avenue garbage can and went on gazing up West Ninth Street towards Wanamaker's. Years ago, we boys went spread out over Caesar's camp with the channel at our backs. In the sun shone across the strip of blue the pink blue cliffs of France, and the wind whispered in the couch grass, and in the heat of the sun, the small herbs sent were pungent and sweet and stirring and one of us would find a bee orchid from fold to fold of the downs the cry would go a bee orchid oh a bee orchid hello a bee orchid and god promised us the kingdoms of the earth and a corner in france and the heart of an oriental woman well here is the corner of France. The kingdoms of the earth are rather at a discount. We should not know what to do with them if we had them. And you, you have no heart. Bakshi, section 7. Riposte. What did you do in Sodom Town? How did you sin in Paris? I heard the small talk rise and die down, and thought, Her hands are tiny and brown, curse on the time that tarries. What did you do twixt then and now, since it is past eleven? I heard the talk run anyhow, and thought, How brown and broad her brow, and her white teeth how even. What will you do twixt now and when you hide neath carven marble? I do not know, but I know, then I'll hear you laugh with gentlemen, 
with your laugh like the blackbird's warble. The eighth and last section of Bakshi, Vers l'oubli. We shall have to give up watering the land almost altogether. The maize must go, but the chilies and tomatoes may still have a little water. The gourds must go. We must begin to give a little to the mandarins and the lemon trees, yes, and the string beans. We will do our best to save the chrysanthemums, because you like them. Then, if only another big storm comes, like the one of Saturday fortnights, we might just barely do it. So we may get through to the autumn. At any rate, we are through with the season of short nights, and water given at dusk will remain in the earth until the torrid sun and the immense north wind they call the mistral once again burn up the face of our hill. You will find there will be no change in the weather now until October. August nearly over. The season of storms is done altogether. There will be nothing but this hot sun and no rain at all till well into the fall. Till then we must trust to the fruits, though their trees are dried down to the ends of their roots. The muscats are done. The bunch that hangs by the kitchen door is the last but one. But the wine grapes and figs and quinces and gauges will go on nearly till September. If you lay down some of the muscat wine grapes on paper on the garret floor, they will shrink and grow sweeter till honey is acid beside them. How singular and vocal and sweet those birds' voices are. For them we may thank the drought. Without it, they say, they never care to come to us from their woods of the infinitely distant south. I wish we could have saved more of the plants, but the weather has tried them beyond their endurance, and there is no goodness in our land on this side of the hill. Even the wood has hardly enough heart to make fuel, though with vine prunings in the winter days. When the sun below us is like ruffled satin, and the sky an infinite number of subtle greys, and the mistral sings an infinite number of lays in Latin, and you crouch beside the hearth, we shall manage to make up a blaze to get up and go to bed by. But I like the baked, severe, cruel hill, with sea below, and the great storm sooner or later. And for me... There is no satisfaction anywhere greater than is given by that house side, silver grey and very high above the sea, with the single black cypress against the sky over the hill and the palm heads waving away at the mistral's will. Well then, we have outlived a winter season and a season of spring and more than one season of harvesting in this land, where the harvests come by twos and threes, one on the other's heels. Do you remember what grew where the eggplants and chilies now stand, or the opium poppies with heads like feathery wheels? Do you remember when the lemons were little and the oranges smaller than peas? We have outlived sweet corn and haricots, the short season of plentiful water and the rose that covered the cistern in the time of showers, and do you remember the thin bamboo canes? We have outlived innumerable growths of flowers, the two great hurricanes, and the innumerable battlings back and forth of the mistral from the Alps in the north, and of Sirocco's filled with the hot breath. Sirocco, that man unto short madness hurrieth, from the sands of Africa, infinite miles to the south. And having so ephemeral outlived the herbs of the hill, we may maybe come through the drought to the winter's mouth, and the season of green things and flowing cisterns and springs. Hark at the voices of those birds in the great Catalpa's shade, hard by the hole where the swift once made their nest on the rafter, thrilling all through the night. 
singular birds with their portentous singular flight and human voices. They came all the way over the sea to the bay from Africa. It is only our drought that could have lured them away so far from the south. It was perhaps they Ulysses took for the sirens calling, Away! when he took shelter here from the thunderous maid. And perhaps we may never again hear their incomparable, full resonance, compact of wailing and indifferent mirth, and undecipherable, honeyed laughter, or not of this earth, and of this torrid sun. For they say it is only once in a century they come this way, in time of drought, from their eeries far to the south in Africa. Or perhaps we shall hear them only after, all harvest gathered in, and the time of all fruits being done. We, oh, but not too severed in time, nor walking apart, shall pluck and cry the one to the other along the folds of Cap Brun, the herb oblivion, for this is a corner of France, and this the kingdoms of the earth beneath the sun, and this the garden sealed and set apart, and that the fountain of Jouvence. And yes, you have a heart.